Live from San Diego, California, it's theCUBE. Covering KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back. Uh, this is theCUBE's coverage of KubeCon, CloudNativeCon 2019 in San Diego. I'm Stu Miniman with my co-host for the week, John Troyer, and happy to welcome to the program Tom Phelan, who's an HPE fellow and was the Blue Data CTO, That's now correct. part of Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Tom, right. thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Stu. All right, nice. so we, we talked with a couple of your colleagues earlier this morning right. uh, about the HPE uh, container platform. We're going to dig in a little bit deeper That's right. here. So let, let set the table for us as to really the, the, the problem statement that HP is looking sure. to solve here. Sure, uh, so Blue Data, which is what the technologies we're talking about, we addressed the issues of how to run applications well in containers in the enterprise. Okay, so that what this involved is how do you handle uh, security? How do you handle day two operations of upgrade of the software? How do you bring CI and CD actions to all your applications? This is what the HPE container platform is all about. So uh, the announcement this morning, which went out, was HPE is announcing the general availability of the HPE container platform, an enterprise solution that will run not only cloud native applications, or typically called microservices applications, but also legacy applications on Kubernetes and it's supported in a, a hybrid environment, so not only the uh, main public cloud providers, but also on-premise. And a little bit of divergence for HPE, HPE is selling this product, licensing this product to work on heterogeneous hardware. So not only HPE hardware, but other competitors' hardware as well. That's good, one of the, one of the things I've been hearing really over the last year is when we talked about Kubernetes, it resonated for the most part with me. I'm an infrastructure guy by right. background. Right. Uh, when, I, when I talk and look to the cloud environment, it's really talking more about the applications. And exactly. that's really, we know, why does infrastructure exist? Infrastructure exists to, to run my applications, it's about my data, it's about my business processes. Right. Um, and it seems like that is a, you know, really where you're attacking uh, with, with this solution. Sure, this, this solution is a necessary portion of the, of the automated infrastructure for providing solutions as a service. So, um, historically, Blue Data has been specializing in artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, big data, that's where our strong suit came from. So we uh, developed a platform that would containerize those applications like TensorFlow, um, Hadoop, Spark, and, and, and the like, make it easy for data scientists to stand up some clusters and then do the horizontal scalability, separate compute and storage, so that you can scale your compute independent of your storage capacity. What we're now doing as part of the HPE container platform is taking that same knowledge, expanding it to other applications beyond AI, ML, and DL. Okay. And so what are some of those the day two implications then? Uh, what, are, what are some that folks run into that then now with a HPE container platform you think will eliminate those sure. problems? It's a, it's a great question. So even though uh, we're talking about applications that are inherently scalable, so AI and ML and DL, they are developed so they can be horizontal, horizontally scalable, they're not stateless in the true sense of the word. When we say a stateless application, that means that uh, there is no state in the container itself that matters. So if you destroy the container, reinstantiate it, there's no loss of continuity. That's a true stateless or cloud native application. Uh, AI and ML and DL applications tend to have configuration information and state information that's stored in what's known as the root storage of the compute node, okay? What's in slash, so you might see um, per node configuration information in a configuration file in the Etsy directory, okay? Today, if you just take standard off-the-shelf Kubernetes, if you deploy um, a Hadoop, for example, or, or TensorFlow, and you configure that, you lose that state when the container goes down. With the HPE container platform, we, are, we have been moving forward with a, or driving a, um, open source project known as Cube Director, 
a portion of Cube Director of the functionality is to preserve that uh, root storage. So that if a container goes down, we are, in, we, are allowed, we are enabled to bring up another instance of that container and have it have the same root storage. So it'll, it'll look like a, a, just a reboot to the node rather than a reinstall of that node. So that's a, a huge value when you're talking about these uh, machine learning and deep learning applications that have this state in root. All right, so Tom, how does Cube Director fit compared to, compared to contrast it? Does it kind of sit aside something like Rook, which was talked about in the keynote, uh, talking about uh, being able to really have that, uh, that kind of universal backplane across all of my clusters? Is right, you can have- Specific to, for AI and ML, or is I, this? It's, yeah. it's a great question. So Cube Director itself is a Kubernetes operator, okay? Uh, and we, we've implemented that, the open source community is joining in, so, but what it allows is Cube Director is um, application agnostic. So you could author a YAML file with some pertinent information about the application that you want to deploy on Kubernetes. You give that YAML file to the Cube Director operator, it will then deploy the application on your Kubernetes cluster and then manage the day two activity. So this is beyond Helm or beyond Kubeflow, which are deployment engines. So this also has, well what happens if I lose my container? How do I bring the services back up and those services are dependent upon the type of application that's there? That's what Cube Director does. So Cube Director allows a new application to be deployed and managed on Kubernetes without having to write a operator in Go code makes it much easier to bring a new application to the platform. Gotcha. So Tom, kind of a two-part question. Uh, first part, so uh, you are one of the co-founders of, of Blue Data, you know, now with, with HPE. Yes. There's, sometimes I think with technologies, some of them are kind of invented in a lab or in a grad student's head. Others come out of really real world experience. Yes. <laughs> and uh, you're smiling, because yes. I, I think Blue Data was, was really built around, uh, you know, or at least your experience was building this these This was 100% real apps. world experience. Yeah. So we were one of the real early pioneers of bringing uh, these applications into containers. You know, truth be told, when Blue Data first started, we were using VMs. We were using op OpenStack and, and VMware. Uh, and we realized that we didn't need to pay that overhead. It, it was possible to go ahead and get the same thing out of a container, so we did that. And we suffered all the slings and arrows of how to make the um, security of the container uh, to meet enterprise class standards. How do we automatically integrate with Active Directory and LDAP and Kerberos with single sign-on? All those things that enterprises require for their infrastructure, we learned that the hard way through working with you know, international banking organizations, financial institutions, investment houses, medical companies. So our, our, all our customers were those high demand enterprises. Now that we're part of HP, we're taking all that knowledge that we acquired, bringing it to Kubernetes, exposing it through Cube Director where we can, and I agree there will be follow on open source projects releasing more of that technology to the open source community. Mm. That, was, that was actually part two of my question is, okay, what about with, now with HPE, the apps that are not AIML, and you, and you, you nailed it, right? Yeah. All those enterprise requirements. Sa same problems exist, right? Yeah. There is secure data. You have secure data in a public cloud. You have it on premise. How do you handle data gravity issues so that you store, you run your compute close to your data where it's necessary, you don't want to pay for moving data across the, the, the web like that. All right, so Tom, platforms used for lots of different things. Yes. Bring us inside, what, 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 what do you feel from your early customers, some of the key use cases uh, that should be highlighted? Our, our, key, our key use cases were those customers who were very interested, they had internal developers, so they had a lot of expertise in house. Maybe they had medical uh, data scientists or financial advisors. They wanted to build up sandboxes. So we helped them stand up cookie cutter sandboxes within a few moments. They could go ahead and play around with them. If they screwed them up, so what, right? We tear them down and, re and redo it within moments. They didn't need a lot of DevOps 
heavyweight lifting to reinstall bare metal servers with these complex stacks of applications. The data scientist said, I want to use this software which just came out of the open source community last week, deployed in a container, and I want to mess it up. I want to you know, you know, be really push the edge on this. And so we did that. We, we developed this sandboxing platform. Then they said, okay, now that you've tested this, I have it in QA, I've done my CI, CD, I've done my testing, now I want to promote it into production. So we did that, we allowed the customer to deploy and define different quality of service depending on what tier their application was running in. If it was in test and dev, it got the lowest tier. If it was in CI, CD, it got a higher level of resource priority. Once it got promoted to production, it got guaranteed resource priority, the highest solution, so that you could always make sure that the customer who was using the production cluster got the highest level of access to the resources. So we built that out as, as a solution. Kube Director now allows us to de deploy that same sort of thing with, with the Kubernetes container orchestrator. Tom, you mentioned blue metal, uh, blue metal, blue, blue, uh, bare metal. We've right. talked about VMs. Ta we, we've been hearing a lot of multi-cloud stories here already today, the first sure. day of, of KubeCon. It seems like that's a reality uh, out in the world. Can, can you talk yes. about where are people putting applications sure. and why? Well, clearly uh, best practices today are to deploy virtual machines and then put containers in virtual machines. And they do that for two very legitimate reasons. One is there's concern about the security uh, plane for containers. So if you had a rogue actor, they could break out of the container and if they're confined within the virtual machine, you can limit the impact of the damage. One very good uh, uh, reason for virtual machines. Also, there's a, uh, a feeling that it's necessary to maintain uh, the container state running in a virtual machine and then be allowed to upgrade the the prom code or the host software itself. So you want to be able to vMotion a virtual machine from one physical host to another and then maintain the state of the containers. What Cube Director brings and what Blue Data and HP are stating is we believe we can provide both of those functionalities on containers on bare metal, okay? And we've spoken a bit about today already about how Cube Director allows the root file system to be preserved. That is a huge uh, component of, being, of why vMotion is used to move the container from one host to another. We believe that we can do that with a, with a reboot. Also, um, HPE Container Platform runs all virtual machines as um, reduced priority. So you're, you're not, we're not giving root priority or privileged priority to those containers. So we minimize the attack plane of the software running in the container by running it as an unprivileged user and then tight control of the container capabilities that are configured for a given container. We believe it's just enough priority or just enough functionality which is granted to that container to run the application and nothing more. So we believe that we are limiting the attack plane of that uh, through the, and that, that's why we believe we can validly state we can run these containers on bare metal without, without the enterprise having to compromise in areas of security or persistence of the data. All right, so Tom, uh, the announcement this week, uh, yes. HPE container platform available today? It will be, a, we are announcing it. It's a limited availability to select uh, customers. It'll be general, generally available in Q1 of 2020. All right, and you know, give us, you know, we, we come back to KubeCon, which will actually be in Boston yes. uh, next year in November. Right. Uh, when we're sitting down with you and you say, hugely successful, right. give us some of those KPIs as to you know, sure. what, what, what your team's looking so at. We're going to look at how many new customers, these are not the historic blue data customers, how many new customers have we convinced that they can run their production workloads on Kubernetes? And we're talking about I don't care how many POCs we do or how many test and dev things, I want to know about production workloads that are the, the bread and butter for these enterprises that HP is helping run in the industry. And that will be not only, as we've talked about, cloud native applications, but also the legacy J2EE applications that they're running 
today on Kubernetes. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you caught the keynote this morning, but Dan Kahn, uh, you know, runs the CNCF, yeah. uh, was talking about you know a lot of the enterprises and equating them with second graders. You know, we need to get over the fact that you know things are going to break, and we're worried about making changes. Right. You know, the software world that you know uh, we've been talking about for a number of years is. Absolutely things will break, but Absolutely. software needs to be resilient That's and right. distributed systems. So, you know, what advice do you give the enterprise out there to sure. be able to dive in and sure. participate? It's a great question, we get it all the time. The first thing is identify your most critical use case, okay, that, that we can help you with, and, and don't try to boil the ocean. Let's get the container platform in there, we will show you how you have success with that one application, and then once that's a, you, you'll build up confidence in the platform, and then we can run the rest of your applications in production. All right, well Tom Phelan, thanks so much for the updates. Well, Congratulations on the launch of the HP Complaint Container Platform, and we look forward to seeing the results in Well, I hope you invite me back, this is really fun, and I, I'm, I'm glad to speak with you today. Thank you. All right. For John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman. Still lots more to go here at KubeCon, CloudNativeCon 2019. Thanks for watching theCUBE. <laughs>